Uh, I still get setting up here. Sorry. Um, can you hear me? Okay. One student that's here. Can you? Uh, oh, yeah. I am recording here. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get going here. Let me share my screen. I've only got one person joined so far. Um, but as usual, anybody. Well, for you that's here, if you have a question, just let me know. Okay, so we've got another one joined. Uh, well, as uh, usual, um, our goal is uh, not assignment three. So we want to talk about our next assignment here. Um, I just finished um, Grading assignment threes, I've posted some, haven't quite posted all the grades, uh, and I've posted a few feedbacks, so, so people should look for that, and I'll post an example solution, as usual. Um, all right, let's look at assignment four then. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, as usual, I, I more want these to become or be run like um, uh, help sessions or, or hackathons, so, um, you know, I encourage people that, that join these live to um, to follow along. Of course, it'd be even better if, if you'd already started um, and you at, are at a point where you have questions or things or just want to um, um, see the discussion. Uh, but certainly, if you're just starting, you can follow along as well. So, um, as usual, I'm, I haven't um, started on this um, assignment yet, so we'll go ahead um, and um, accept the assignment for invitation. To get our, excuse me, to get our GitHub classroom, GitHub um, repository set up in the classroom. Um, and then we will go ahead and um, clone a repository, so. Into our assignments directory. And open air. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of right, I talked about this on Monday, people are still, uh, some are still having problems with the extension. So if you're having problems with your code formatting, especially let me know. Um, so I think definitely we need to get people to uninstall their C++ IntelliSense extension and reinstall it. So not a lot. There's maybe one or two in particular, though. So um, now that I've got the repository cloned and um, off some of these here, so. Don't confuse us here. Here's the side of four. Um, yeah, as usual, I haven't actually completed all the stuff before we can get going. So, you know, I did, I, I copied the assignment repository on GitHub. I've cloned the repository so far. We haven't, I haven't done the configuration step. So, you always do need to do that. So, we'll open up a terminal and run configure. So yeah, again, you won't also, I mean, that's another possible reason why formatting won't work. So you won't have your formatting working until you do the configure step and get the um, .vs code subdirectory and the .clang format um, into your repository there. So, um, so. And then let's check everything builds and runs. Uh, go open up my tests. So we'll do a control shift one to do a clean, control shift two to build all, make all. And then control shift three to run the tests. Uh, yeah, so everything, that's what you should be seeing. So you should see just one test case running. Um, yeah, I think we are again using the um, the, the list class um, with a few modifications from your assignment three. 
for this assignment here. So, but yeah, the, the first test case was uncommented initially on this assignment, just testing the, the list class again. So, so the first one that you're gonna be doing is uh, commented out, um, um, but uh, we have to implement this published copy just right. Okay. So somebody, um, let me go ahead and ask your um, question on task one if you want to. Um, so, so yeah, I think I'm ready to, to start talking about task one here. Um, and yeah, if you're following along, you can be working on it. So basically, we need kind of like a copy constructor. Um, so this is similar to the um, uh, constructor that you had to do for the um, large integer assignment too, the one before the last one. Um, where well that one wasn't exactly a copy constructor but it was, you you have done a constructor before uh, where you had to create a large integer given an array um so here we need to have a copy constructor um that makes a copy of a sub portion of an existing list this is important so again you know uh, this assignment i'm leading you through building some pieces that will make it easier you know so so by using writing member functions, uh, member constructors in such a way we can reuse them. So this is all about code reuse, function reuse, uh, in order to implement the actual sort and search. That is the, the uh, um, focus of this assignment, basically. So, um, so oh yeah, I haven't, uh, actually I didn't, uh, uh, create my tasks yet, so I didn't quite create all the, the setup things here. Um, well, well, I'll go ahead and do those real quick here. I'll just break the first issue here, so. And let's associate that with our pull request. All right, there we go. Now I'm pretty much ready to go. So, um, as usual, you can always start by, you know, first uncommenting the set of tests that you need to work on for task one in this case. Save that, um, you know, and as usual, I mean, you can try building. If you build, um, it shouldn't build, um, you know, and, and basically because um, you haven't, we haven't implemented the um, top, the, the sublist copy constructor. Okay, so so here's here's an example of what we need to have though. So if we create a list, but we have an existing list, so we have an existing list called L1 with five values in it. So, so these five strings, this is a, a list of strings. So, so we did modify this from the, the list that you used in the previous assignment. So now we, we're, we, the, the list holds a list of strings instead of a list of integers. Um, so I'll bring that up here in a second, but um, uh, to finish off this thought, uh, so we got a list of five values, but, but we want to have a copy of the list that only has the values zero to two. Um, and, and these again are inclusive, sort of like your begin and in index um, that you had to do for all of your functions in our most recent assignment. So that this, this means we want a list with just the, the first three values. So the ones from zero, index zero, one, and two. So, so the, the neomorphous and current, right? And it should be a copy. So the original list shouldn't be, should still have the same values as a result um, of calling this here, right? So let's look at the, the list here. So um, it's not too different from the one that, that you used before. Um, it, it's got defined the operator, the, the um, indexing operator, so that we can actually uh, index into it as if it was just a regular array. And it's got the equals operator so that we can compare if two lists, lists are equal or not. Um, and I had already given you the, the standard constructor like, like 
we, we had these before basically uh, and, and a copy constructor as well. So we had these in our previous assignment um, and uh, we can go ahead and look at these as well. So, so the, the basic copy constructor takes another list and just copies it into this list. Um, so let's look at that one. So, um, usual, I usually kind of like to use the, these outlines here. So, here's my outline of the list.cpp. Uh, here's the, um, the default constructor, kind of gives an empty one um, with all empty strings. Uh, if, you, if you call, like, if I'm on a list of size five, you'll get a list with five empty strings in it. Um, as a result of this copy construct or this basic constructor, it's not really a, a default constructor because it does take a um, parameter. Um, or we can construct a list um, from an array of values. So here we're, we're using our, um, strings here. So our array is an array of strings instead of an array of ints. But um, um, this constructor takes a, another array of strings as values of, of strings as input um, and um, creates a new array um, that, that holds the values for this list and then just copies all those strings from the input values into the um, uh, dynamically allocated array of values that we have. So. Um, and then the copy constructor does something similar, but, but we take another list as input um, as a constant reference for our list here. Um, but from that list, uh, since this is a member function of the list class, we can access private things like the, the size. Um, um, although we did have a get size, so I could have also used get size here instead of accessing the private. But anyway, so we, so we get the size of the list that we're copying. Um, we create a new array of values dynamically. Um, and then we copy all the values again, making use of um, um, although since we have the overloaded operator, again, I didn't have to use the um, uh, access the private array if I didn't want to, but um, that's that's what this implementation is doing. Um, all right, so. The, the question's about task one. So task one is we have to get this implemented and um, I'm not gonna show it to you, but I'll get you started. Um, so you should be able to see what the, what, the, um, um, what the declaration, the, the signature of this function is. It takes three parameters. So, so it's similar to this existing one, but we need two other parameters a begin and in indexes, which are just integers, right? Um, that we, oops, that we talked about here. So, um, so it's most similar to this one. Um, but um, but we're taking the um, beginning in index of the sublist that we want to um, copy, basically, right? Um, so, oh, kind of uh, in general, you know, most people, when you're writing classes like this, they usually, uh, it's considered good style to keep, so the order that you have the declarations in um, your um, declaration of the list in C++, you should keep those functions in the same order in your implementation file. So um, here we're putting the, uh, the sublist copy constructor right after the, the, the full copy constructor. Um, so I just put it right after the copy constructor. Um, and um, um, I'll reuse, I'll start by reusing the, um, the, the function documentation, uh, although modify this. You know, so always try to make certain your documentation is up to date. Um, so this copy constructor 
this company is a sub portion of the given list, the given input list. All right. So, um, Um, so besides, so we got some extra parameters now, um, which should get in there. Uh, what did I call them? Begin index. And in index. All right. So this is the starting index. The sub portion of the list copy into this new list. All right there. So we got our documentation done. You should be clear about what your thing is supposed to be doing. Um, and um, that's as much as I'm going to give you here, although you can ask questions now. Maybe I'll give a few minutes here for people that are following along um, to see if they want to try to implement that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost the same as this. You just have to modify which values you copy, but you can pretty much use the previous um, full the constructor, right? Hi, Professor. So do we just, um, the um, in task one, do we just make a copy of the portion of the list that we are given? Yes. Is that the only purpose of the copy constructor? Yeah, yeah. So so, so it's it's like making a, it's like this, this copy constructor that makes a copy of all the values of the input list. So the right. list, but, but we're only copying the particular portion of the list that you're asked to copy right so i guess one tricky thing is uh yeah i mean you know so if i if, if we ask to copy um let's give an example here so if we ask to copy the values from two to four so that's trinity cipher and oracle here uh the value index two has to go into the index zero um in the uh the, the new array for the new list that we create here so, so you do have to, you know, yeah, you have to go from the, the, the begin index into index zero, and then the next one goes into index one and so on. So, right. oh, got it. I'll try that. Uh, but yeah, with this, my, my code should compile now, right? I didn't try that. Let's try. I'm going to do a clean here. Um, but but now that I've given that, uh, we, we actually have our declaration of the copy constructor and we've got an implementation that doesn't do anything. So presumably um, though we can compile, but um, uh, when we run these, all these should fail. In fact, it might crash because we don't, uh, we're not initializing, like I'm not initializing the list size and things like that. So maybe I should at least, At least make it zero, so maybe it won't crash if I do that. At least, all right. So, um, kind of as just another, another general sort of, uh, suggestion here whenever you run your tests, I mean, you always want to go all the way to the top and look at the first failing one, uh, and be careful that you are seeing the beginning of the test. So, um at some point, we might have so many tests that it scrolls past the, the, the buffer here. Um, I don't know if that will end up being an issue yet in this assignment or not, but, but, but yeah, you might have to actually 
um, increase the your scroll buffer size. I think it has a limit of a couple of hundred or a thousand or something like that. Uh, so yeah, if you open up your settings and look for scroll back or buffer, yeah, it is a thousand. So sometimes that can be a little small if you got lots of tests. Um, Anyway, but but yeah, always always and always start with the first failing test. So um, well now on my task one, my first failing one is one seventy four, which um, should be expected. Yeah, I mean you know I'm not changing the original list, so so that passed fine because the original list still has its fine values. But um, but um, yeah, my my new list isn't correctly initialized with these three values yet. All right, um, other questions on task one? You can give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on or yes, or you can ask questions. I might wait a minute or two if, if people are uh, implementing this or to think about it. Um, if you're just starting, you might need a, need a little bit more than a few minutes, but. If I missed anything, so uh, one of the disadvantages of doing these right when I do these help sessions is I sometimes forget some of the things in here. So um, so we added in the two additional parameters. Um, both integers indicate the portion of the past in list that should be copied. All right. Yeah, so I think we're good. Anybody, anybody want to ask a further question about? Ask one. Not nah, go ahead and get that two going. So in task two, um, we want to um, have a function that merges two given sorted lists back into um, this list instance. Okay, so uh, so. So, so we give some idea of the signature of the, um, so, so we describe it. So it takes two lists um, as input. Um, it shouldn't be modifying e either of these other two lists. So they should both be passed in as constant reference parameters like we've been doing. So by, uh, by the way, sorry, this is kind of what I was thinking about for the Monday session. I incorrectly had said that you need to be passing those in by const um, to uh, the, those parameters in some cases um, as constant lists, uh, which you couldn't really do. So I did make an announcement about that, but um, um, yeah. So the, the reason for that, we'll, we'll talk more about the reason for that when we talk about operator overloading. So basically the, uh, the, the indexing operator for our list class um, can be used to actually modify the list, which makes it um, which, which means you can't use that operator if you declare the list to be constant, even if you just want to use that operator to, to read the value out for, uh, at a particular index instead of modifying the value. So that, that in a nutshell was kind of, um, so um, we potentially could have the same issue here. Uh, but, but, but yeah, you should, we should, um, according to the instructions, we should, um, declare both of these lists to be constant reference parameters. Um, we call them like lower and upper. So, um, um, Oh, 
Let's see, maybe I should, um, I, I need to clarify something out of these instructions. I, I don't see. So there, there's an important thing that I, sh I should have said kind of right up front here on, on the merge function. Both of the, the, these two lists are actually uh, need to already be sorted before you call merge on them. All right. So this algorithm that, that we're given assumes that the, the two lists, um, the, the, the two smaller lists um, are already, both of them are already sorted um, in like ascending order. Uh, um, and, and that's kind of what this algorithm uh, is doing. So the, the reason why the algorithm does what it does is, so you start at the, the index zero for both the lower and the upper list. And whichever one is the smaller, uh, you copy that value for, from the smaller. The, 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 the smaller could be in the lower or the upper, but, but you copy whichever is the, the current smallest value. Um, you in, increment the index um, of that list that you just copied from. So if I copied the, the value in lower, I want to increment my index. So the next time I'm comparing, you know, I've already copied one value out of lower. So, so I want to be looking at the next value in lower, but I'm still looking at the same value in upper, right? So, so you're going to keep repeating that copying values either from lower or upper um, until you've exhausted all the values in one of those arrays, right? Um, and then after that, so, so, so when you're done, uh, you, you will end up have copying all the values completely out of one of the two arrays, but there could be one or more values left uh, in the other array. Um, so um, at the end, then you have to copy any values that are left over um, out of those arrays um, into, um, into this list, basically. So yeah, there, there's, um, I think this, this is probably, well, um, there's a lot of bookkeeping to keep track of in this function here. So let's just look at it. Um, so as usual for me, you know, um, things are clear if you look at the actual uh, use of what we're talking about here. This function was important enough that we broke it up into actually smaller sections here for the tests for, for task two here. So the basic idea though, um, so look, we, we've got a list with two values and, and they should always be sorted already. So sci and, and we're talking about, you know, um, uh, increasing sorts here um, alphabetically for strings. So, so C's come before N's, M's come before T's here in our two lists that we're going to do a merge on. Um, and then the result should be, um, so here, the, you know, the reason why there's so many sections is I'm, I was trying to exhaustively test kind of all the, the possible interleavings that you might have to do um, to follow that algorithm we talked about. So, so here, I mean, Cypher should end up coming in first among these two lists, uh, followed by um, M Morpheus, followed by N, Neil, followed by T, Trinity. So you should end up with these four sorted values in the um, um, result list. Here. Here's one, uh, yeah, I had forgotten. Here, here's why we have that, that empty constructor. So this just creates a list with four, big enough to hold four values that are all empty. And then we end up kind of throwing away those empty strings when we do the merge here to copy in, you know, to merge these two upper, lower and upper list that we pass in to the, to the result list. Um, anyway. So result, or the, the merge, um, um, should probably be considered like a sorting and searching method. So it should go here, right? Um, when, when you make your declaration. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do this one too here. Um, 
So, you know, merge takes two other lists. Like we said, they should be constant references. Uh, notice, and it doesn't return a result. Um, so so uh, the result is implicitly um, that the values are merged and copied into the list that you call merge on. So, so, so these values from the, the two passed in lists end up being copied into the result list here uh, when we do the merge. Right? So, so if I didn't say, that means that, that this function is a void function, doesn't actually return anything explicit. So that means that you've got a function called merge that doesn't return anything that takes um, constant references, lower and upper lists. I don't know if lower and upper is a really good name. That's more of like a merge sort sort of thing. Um, make it make more sense once you. Um, do the merge sort algorithm, but, but yeah, we could have called this. I mean, it's really just kind of the one, you know, there's no real position on these. It's, uh, the, the, the first list and the second list or, or um, whatever, but. Um, so I defined, I declared that after the output stream operator. So we should put that down in here, basically. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, don't forget that, um, oh, this isn't a list memory exception. I shouldn't have copied that. So that wasn't a, wasn't a very good starting point. Uh, this, is, this is actually a member of list. Uh, let's copy something else. So I have a little bit less typing to do. So like maybe this one. The starting point. So I mean, you know, it's good to, to you know kind of reuse things as a starting point rather than trying to type everything from scratch. So just of course, you got to make certain that you you change everything you need. So you know, starting with our signature, it's a void function that's a member of list called merge. Oops, merge. We need two columns there, um, and we're taking two constant list parameters. Um, but the function is not a constant function. So. But yeah, I mean, you know, as usual, your signatures have to match. And the only difference is going to be that in the implementation file, we have to have that uh, further indication that this is a member of the, the particular class that was declared to be a member of. So somebody asked me that uh, as a question recently, you know, so, so yeah, you don't put all those those um, namespace. These, these are related to the concept of namespaces in C++. Because I mean, you know, the, the, the C compiler knows that everything inside of the declaration of the list class are all members of the list namespace, you know. So all these things, member variables and member functions and constructors and things are all members of the list cl class. But outside of this declaration of the list class, um, you know, we have to tell the, the compiler, we have to tell it, you know, so I'm, I'm making this function called merge, but oh, by the way, you know, this is in that list namespace. This merge function here so. that I'm implementing. Um, um, so your brief description should be um, just like two or three, maybe five words. That might be a little bit big for a brief description, right? Well, another thing. Um, there, there should be a space between them, as we found out last time, which I might not always have done either um, for all the functions. So, uh, because, I mean, doc oxygen, if you don't have the space, it's going to put uh, everything together as the brief description. 
So you want to have a space. So this ends up being your longer description for the, the function documentation, right? Um, and then it's not required to have spaces here, but, but I think visually it's a good idea to have a, a, a blank line to separate out your parameters and out your return statements. So um, in this case, we don't have a return. So we don't really need a return. But, oops, that was the wrong function there. Um, so yeah, in this case, we don't really have a return value. So this function, so, so given two already sorted lists, lower, merge them into this list, sweeping the resulted, resulting merge list sorted as well, right? So that's the whole purpose of this merge function. Merging two small, already sorted lists um, together into one single list, uh, but keeping the sorting, right? Uh, and by the way, um, so you should be watching um, the um, about algorithmic complexity. The, the, the thing about the merge, if, if you follow this algorithm, is it's an O-N. Um, um, it, it, it works in linear time. I mean, given that lower and upper are um, sorted, um, this loop um, only has to occur the, the, the number of times because, because each time in the loop, one value from lower or upper gets copied into the resulting merge list, right? So this, this list will, will, will execute, or this, this loop will execute uh, in times where n is the combined number of values in lower and upper, the two lists that are being merged in the one list. Okay? But that's kind of important. That, that's what ends up making merge sort um, an in log in algorithm that you'll be seeing when you um, go through the materials for this week. Um, um, that we can do this merge in linear time, in, in O in time. Um, Um, so this is one of the two lists we are merging into the into this um, this list should be sorted before calling function for it to work correctly, right? This is the other, the two lists we're merging into this resulting list. So, all right. Um, yeah, and like I did for the first one, um, so we can leave that empty, but um, that should allow us to compile and run. So it's always a good uh, test, you know. So first get everything back so it compiles and can run the tests, um, and then you can start working on the implementation. So, um, So yeah, and, and we're running the three test cases now. So the initial one, and then we've got our two uncommented now. So three in total. But we should probably be failing. Um, oh well, we're still failing all the ones for the the first test case. Yeah, but um, but yeah, even this first one um, here should be failing on line two fifty six, of course, because again, we're not merging anything yet. Um, good. Thumbs up. Anybody want me to um, pause for a bit or ask some questions about the merge function? 
I'm probably going to stop giving you the signatures. And I mean, you know, that's a good practice, you know, I mean, that's how I normally start uh, a task like this. Um, I mean, when, I, when I'm doing real work, real coding, you know, so I always start with the function signature and describing it, uh, make certain everything compiles and runs. You know, that, that, that's a good thing. Um, You know, I mean, just to be clear about what you need to do to actually implement it, you know, that, that, that just gets you um, in the right mindset, you know, makes you think about the issues of, of um, what, um, how you need to implement it and, and what might be difficulties and those kinds of things. So, not to mention, of course, like we showed last time, this has a side effect that you get good um, function documentation, right? So, um, Um, so always maybe a good idea to check that um, you're not getting any warnings from generating the doc oxygen reference and reference documentation about missing things and stuff like that. So. All right, questions. Let's move on to task three, unless somebody wants to pause for a bit or ask the question. So in task three, um, we're actually ready to implement the sort member function. We're going to be um, we're going to be implementing a version of merge sort. If you follow the um, um, the the algorithm that described here, merge sort is a recursive function, right? So hopefully you learned enough about recursion to understand what's going on here um, on the previous assignment, previous unit. Um, merge sort is a in log in sorting algorithm. So it's considered a good sorting algorithm. So, um, so um, in um, its average performance, every average case performance is in log in. Um, and that's its worst performance as well. So, so it uh, doesn't degenerate into something like a bubble sort, even in the worst case. So, so it's a pretty good um, sorting algorithm. Um, and uh, the, the sort, the, the merge sort uses the, the two previous functions. So um, basically merge sort works by splitting um, an unsorted list or unsorted array into two equal par parts, recursively calling merge sort on those smaller parts Right, so so the splitting is going to be handled by the um, sublist copy constructor to 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 split into two sublists um, um, by by using the, the capabilities you implement for the task one, um, and then we call sort we call merge sort recursively on itself, but on smaller and smaller lives lists. So the, the list gets smaller by half, basically uh, each recursive call. Um, and then the base case for merge sort is a list of size zero or a list of size one is already sorted. So just like for summing, like, like for your previous um, assignment for summing or for checking for is palindrome uh, with recursive implementation, whenever you have list of size zero or list of size one, that's a base case. Um, um, those lists are sorted by definition. Right? You don't have to do anywhere, you just return. Um, otherwise, um, if the, the, the list is bigger than size one, if it's two or bigger, you recursive, you break it in half, recursively sort those two things by calling merge sort recursively. So there's going to be two recursive calls to merge sort. Uh, both the, the result of that would, would be to, um, to, to sort the, the two halves that you um, break it into, right? And then you're going to call merge on the results. So after after sorting on the, the two half lists, you can call the merge function. And so after that point, both of those two smaller lists, half size lists that we call upper and lower, um, should be sorted after calling your merge sort and returning from it. So then you can call merge uh, to create 
the, the one resulting big list um, that's sorted, right? And, and, you know, if you've never done stuff like this before, it seems magical that, that you know, you don't do anything except for, so, so nothing is, is comparing values. Um, uh, the, well, that's not true. So all, all of the, the comparison of values happens right here in the merge function because um, it compares the, the value in the lower and the upper and whichever is the smaller, um, it moves uh, to the resulting merge list. So that's kind of how, that, that's the place where the comparison is happening to get the, the sorting to work um, for the sort algorithm here. So. Um, So, um, so yeah, I think that's, I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna give you the signature here, although, you know, the, 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 the sort, um, hopefully I describe it here, um, or we, we can look at the, um, the test here uh, to be more concrete of, of the sort function. Um, so, I mean, sort doesn't take any input and it doesn't return a result, right? So it's a void function um, and no parameters. So, so that's a pretty simple signature because it's sorting the values that you're given, right? So um, this, this first section actually tests your base case. So, so you ought to be able to get the base case working pretty quickly. So if the list is size zero or the list is size one, you can just return immediately. There's nothing to do. Because the, the list is already sorted by definition. So those, those constitute your two base cases. How do you find the size? Well, you know, um, all these list um, classes, instances, keep track of the size of the list. So you can just use the size member variable to see if the size is zero or one, right? So this constructor should be constructing an empty list, setting the size to zero. This constructor should be constructing a list of size one. So the size member variable would be one for this list. And both of these would be your base cases. Um, but then, yeah, the, the result. So if you call sort, um, if the values are unsorted, um, you know, it doesn't return an explicit result, but um, afterwards, the, the, the value should be sorted in ascending order from lowest alphabetically to highest alphabetically here. Okay? Um, so again, for after the base case, um, so, um, so yeah, the, the signature is simple. Um, the base case, hopefully, everybody can get the base case and get these two um, things passing. But after you get to that, after you get past that part, um, you have to split into two instances, okay? So here's an example of splitting, All right? So this will this will cause, uh, this is using the sublist copy constructor that you do in task one to copy. So, so this assumes, um, so, so how do you find, how do you split? Uh, you wanna split at the mid, uh, the, approximately the middle of the list. So basically all you have to do is if, uh, if you take the size of the list, so let's say the, the size of the list was, was five, if you do an integer division, so, so whenever you divide integers in C++, it'll do integer division for you. So if you do five divided by two, you'll actually get a result of two. It'll just round it or it'll just chop off any fractional part. So if I have a list of size four or size five, when I divide by two, uh, the mid index is going to be indicated to be two. So you, you would make the, the, you know, for the list of size five, you would end up with the first three values, zero, one, and two indexes would go into the lower list. Um, and then, um, you know, so, so once you select that midpoint two, the, 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 the upper list should be that midpoint plus one to the, the, the last index uh, of your original list. So upper would go from index three to five for a list of size five, right? All right. So notice in that case, um, um, or uh, sorry, a list where the last index is five is actually a size six. Um, uh, if, if the, if, uh, so again, so, so even I can slip up, you know, even though I've been doing 
programming with zero based indexed arrays. So I know it takes, it, 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 if you don't, haven't done a lot of this stuff, um, it'll often trip you up thinking about these things, right? So um, um, if the list is of size five, that means the valid indexes are from zero to four, right? So if you divide uh, five by two, um, you'll get 2.5. So you end up with a middle of two. Um, um, so you'd end up for a list of size five, you'd get three values in the lower part and two values in the upper part, but that's fine. So, so they don't have to be exactly equal um, and the merge sort will still work. If the list was size four, the valid indexes would be from zero to three, right? But, but if you divided by four by two, you would get two again, um, Um, sorry, so, so if the list was of size four, um, no, that's right. Um, yeah, I gotta, have to go back and read my description. So. It, that there are uh, ways that, um, um, so the way I'm describing here in the description, uh, yeah, you just divide by two. So, so dividing four by two would get you a result of two. Um, but, but yeah, the way I described it is that you should be using that as the, the first index for the upper. So, so for even size lists, if you do the way I describe here, um, it would always divide these into um, equal size lists. Uh, so zero and one would go into the lower and two and three would go into the upper. Um, but, but again, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing here. So um, um, although I can see I got a mistake in my description. Um, so if, again, if the list was of size five, if you divide by two, you would still get two as a result from doing energy division. But again, by this description, you should put zero and one in the lower list, and then you'd end up with the three values, two, three, and four um, in the upper list, right? So, so you have the mistake here now that I'm reading this. Um, is I should have had the example be uh, from zero to one to be consistent with the description um, here. Okay, so hopefully that, that doesn't confuse. I'll try and remember to correct that here. Um, so anyway, that's all you need to do for the split. Um, then you have to call sort recursively on both of these sublists. So you just call sort on the lower and sort on the upper. Right. And again, since it's a void function, it doesn't take any parameters. Uh, so, so how do you call it on the lower and the upper? So again, lower and upper are, are instances of lists. Right. So it would just be like I have a list called lower, and I'd have to say lower.sort to call sort on the lower list. Right. Um, and then you have to call merge um, on this instance. Uh, with the return lower um, and upper list copies, right? So, yeah, and, and um, you know, looking over that, I think merge is the tougher of these first three. If, if you get if you get you know task one and task two done, I think the recursion, this description of the recursion for the merge sort, um, is not too tough. It's only about five lines of code here. Um, uh, to do the merge sort. So. All right, uh, yeah, so it's already getting kind of uh, uh, later, so I should probably wrap up. Uh, any, any quick questions on the merge sort here? I've been talking about it for a while. I'll see, I'm waiting to see if anybody has a question. Let me go ahead and get Issue four, task four, um, it's created. So um, after you get sorting working, um, we're going to um, actually implement some searches. Uh, we're going to implement a binary search, okay? So if, if you watch the materials from this week, um, um, binary search is much uh, um, 
a much faster searching algorithm than a, a linear search, right? So linear search takes uh, a linear time. So it takes O n time to go in. But a binary search uh, can be done in log time, log base two time, um, actually, right? So if you haven't, haven't gone through the materials yet, you should uh, to understand what we're talking about here. But um, we're basically going to uh, implement uh, a recursive version of, of a uh, binary search relying on the fact that we now have a sort method so that we can easily sort our list. And once it's sorted, then we can do the, the faster binary search, right? So binary search doesn't work unless the um, list is sorted, okay? So in our textbook, if you just read the textbook, it gave a, an iterative version of binary search. Um, although I, I, our, our um, supplementary textbook might also have a, a recursive version of binary search, I can't remember. So you can read either of those or watch my videos about searching and sorting um, where I, I think I showed the iterative version using a loop for binary search in the videos this week on, on binary search, so this unit. So. Um, so the, the, the signature for the search function Let's just go ahead and look at the test for it. Get a concrete example of how you call the search. So here we're making taking advantage of the fact that we can have we should have a sort working by this point. Before we do task, um, what is this, task four? Uh, yeah, task four. Um, and so, so search takes um, three values. So again, this is, this is um, kind of like our, our previous assignment three. So, so um, um, we take the value that we want to search for. So, so we call search on, on the list of values that we're searching. Uh, we take the string, so this is just a string, um, and this can be a, uh, probably should be like a constant reference, um, although I might not have, I might not have uh, spelled that out explicitly, but, but you're not going to be changing that string, so, so you can return that, you can pass that in as a constant reference value. Um, and then you take a begin and end index, okay? Um, and this is for the, the recursive, um, um, implementation, right? So normally when you would call a search, you would just um, pass in the value you want to search for. And, and, and uh, the search function returns, um, it, re it should return the index, right? So if, I, if, if we search for Agent Brown, Agent Brown should end up at index zero in this list. Um, so if you search for that, you should get a result of zero, indicating that we found it and it was at index zero of the list. Right. Um, and, and, you know, but, but you can search a sub portion of the list using this interface. So if there's 20 items, uh, again, these are inclusive. So that means search the full list from index zero up to index 19. Search, search the full list here. If, if we search for, you know, a value at some other location, you know, so if we search for the value at index 19, it should return 19. Um, So yeah, that, that's, that's basically it for the first version of search I'll talk about in task, um, task four here. I'm just looking, um, I guess I didn't make any test of searching like a sub portion of the list um, because I mean, really, this is just um, a setup to do the, the algorithm recursively here. So, so because you've got the beginning index, so, so let me just kind of wrap up this section. So, so there's a description. You do have to implement this version using recursion. So, so we're still practicing recursion here, this, this search using a recursive binary search. This is an example of, of uh, both the, the merge sort and, this, and uh, the recursive binary search are, are examples of, of divide and conquer. Uh, recursion here. 
So again, um, to do this recursive relay, we calculate the middle index um, of the remaining portion of the list. So whatever the so here this is a little bit different from how you calculate the middle index for the merge. So you so you calculate the middle index here based on the begin and end index that you're given. All right. So if the begin and end index are, are zero and nineteen. Uh, what you want to do is you want to figure out the size. So the size is going to be the n minus the big n, so 19 minus 0. Um, so, so the size is 19, basically. It's, it's actually 20. So it's, it's going to be that minus that plus 1. But, but just take begin minus or, uh, n minus begin. So that gives you 19 in this case, and divide by 2. Um, and um, that will give you the, the mid the middle index, okay? Then what you do for binary search, uh, the, the base case is, this is kind of the base case of the recursion. So, so you test. Um, so if, if the value you're searching for happens to be at that middle index that you just calculated, uh, you return that index where you found it. So that's the success condition. Otherwise, if, if the list is sorted, um, the, 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 the value has to be somewhere either to the left or to the right of that middle index. Okay. So to make this concrete, let, let's say, you know, so if, if you start searching for zero to 19, the middle is going to be at like nine, which is uh, somewhere around, you know, let's say the middle is Morpheus. Okay. So if you're searching for Agent Brown um, and um, um, the, the, the first time before we start doing recursion here, your middle index would be like Morpheus or whatever index nine is, right? So in that case, you, you failed to find it so far, but if you compare Morpheus to um, Agent Brown, if, if you were searching for Agent Brown, um, you would find that, that Agent Brown is less than um, the value at index nine, Morpheus. So that means that I need to, to search the list from zero up to mid minus one, right? So from zero to eight. So you need to recursively call um, the search function, but on indexes starting in the index zero up to mid minus one to search the portion to the left or to the lower, you know, port. So, so that's if the, the, the key you're searching for is less than the value at the midpoint that you were testing, right? But you can have the other case. So, so you need to have like an if statement. So your recursion is an if statement. So if the value you're searching for was less than the, the value at the midpoint, you search the, the lower portion of the list from zero to, or from the begin index, you know? So again, remember, you might not be, you might be into your recursion stack. So whatever the begin index is of the current sub portion of the list that you're looking at up to the mid minus one. Um, if instead the um, key you're searching for um, is greater than the midpoint that you calculate, you wanna search from mid plus one to end. So, so in that case, you would call your recursion, um, like in an if else statement. So, so else, if the key is greater than um, the key at the midpoint, search from mid, pl mid plus one to end, right? And then if you keep doing that, so basically this is divide and conquer because every time you do a recursive call like that, you throw you eliminate half of the list. If you don't end up having to find it at the midpoint, it's either in the first half or the second half of the list. So, so at every, um, recursive call, I eliminate half of the values to look for. Um, so I, I think I talked about this in my video. So it's like, uh, this is how you would look up a word in a dictionary, uh, kind of like how you look up a word in a dictionary or like in a phone book, look up a name. So they're going to be sorted alphabetically or by the, the word uh, in the dictionary. So uh, a, a fast way to find the words, you, you go to the middle, um, and then that'll tell you whether your word is to the left or the right. Um, um, all right, and um, then um, I just need, I do need to wrap up here. Um, so, um, for issue five, uh, we're going to actually be implementing one more function and um, Um, and there we go. Um, 
implementing one new function um, in order to improve the API for search. Okay, so what I mean by that is a normal user of the uh, the um, class. There, there's two things we're going to be improving about this. So a normal user of a search wants to search the whole list, right? Um, so so it, it, it's unusual that that's kind of an unusual uh, case to want to search a sub portion of the list. So you can do that when, once you implement task four. You could search just a portion of the list. But normally, you know, I, I just want to know is the value I'm looking for in my list or not. It, anywhere in the list, right? So normally I'd wanna call search with just the value I'm searching for, all right? Um, and then the second thing though that we're improving is um, uh, for our search method to work, it does assume that the list is already sorted, right? So we're gonna improve both of those um, uh, in task five. So one, we're gonna add an is sorted method. So is sorted um, is a, um, it should be a constant member method because it's just returning information. Right, um, and it returns a Boolean result. So it should return true if the list is currently sorted and false if it's not. And uh, for this task, we need to determine this dynamically. Okay, so we're not gonna add like a member variable that is initially false, but as soon as sort is called once, um, you set it to true. Instead, we're just gonna always test to see if the list is sorted or not, right? So, so the way you test that is you compare, you know, I described the algorithm here, but you start at index zero. And if index zero, when you compare to index one of the list is in sorted order. So that means if, if index zero is less than index one, less than or equal, um, then um, the list is still potentially sorted. And then you test index, then you move up by one and test index one to two. But if at any point, so if you look at index zero and it's greater than, uh, equal is fine, but if, if, if the value in zero is greater than one, then that's evidence that the list isn't sorted because all indexes at all the values at index, lower indexes have to be less than or equal to the value at the next higher index for the list to be sorted, right? So, you know, you keep testing, you know, if, if zero and one are, are in the correct order, then you test one and two, right? If, if you test all the values um, up to the last value, be careful you don't make an off by one error and test the value at the last index to the, the value plus one, all right? But anyway, if, if all the values are sorted, then the answer is true. But if you ever find one pair of values that are out of order, then you wanna return false from the is sorted, okay? Um, once you have this sorted working, then you're gonna be adding in um, a search method um, that, um, just takes one value. So you're going to be overloading search. So you'll end up having two versions of search. One that takes a single parameter, a string as the key for input, and one that you already implemented that takes the three parameters that does the actual search. But this new version will first check. Um, so you'll first call um, is sorted. Um, and if it's false, so if, if it's not true that the list is already sorted, you'll first sort the list. And then after that, you will call search, the, the other version of search with um, the um, uh, three parameters. So, so you call search, uh, searching the whole list. So, so you'll want to search for the value that was asked for, but starting at, at index zero up to the last index to search the whole list, right? And, and whatever result the, um, the, the, the actual search returns is the result you should return from your API, you know, your overloaded version of the search here. All right. Okay, so, you know, kind of again, as usual, I've gone a little bit longer than I wanted to. Um, there's, oh, there's actually two tasks. So you might want to do these one at a time. So, so there's two sets of tests for task five. So one of these just tests your is sorted. So you can get that working first. Um, and then one test your overloaded, your second version of search. Um, so for example, you know, um, we're going to call search on an unsorted list, uh, but it should work. Um, so. Uh, to, you know, after you call search on an unsorted list, you expect the list to be sorted at that point. Um, and then, you know, it should work to find um, 
the value that you search for. Um, but, but yeah, again, notice that the API for this overload function is just, you're just passing in the value that you want to search for. Um, all right, any last quick questions? I do need to wrap up here. All right. Um, yep. So hopefully that uh, gets you guys started. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it for the section. Um, I, I will post this video for anybody that wants to review it. Uh, it should be up uh, soon. Um, and yeah, keep asking questions by email um, or you know use your repositories if you have questions. Use comments. Um, and I'll see you guys later then.